lives. Do y'all have any questions that they have for us? We can take their questions. If y'all have any one of them watching us and they want to send me any questions. I'm taking questions too, you guys. So if y'all got any questions for me, send them to me and I can pose them to the group here and we can just kind of get some feedback going. Can I ask for the information to be said again for those who might not have heard it the first time? Yes, go for it. There is help. Sure. So Project so Celebration, uh, we are a domestic violence and sexual assault program. Um, our phone number is 318-226-5015 and all of our services are free and confidential. Uh, my name is Ruby Sear. I'm with Sears Mediation and Counseling Services. I'm available Monday through Friday from 8 to uh, 5, and my office is located at 610 Marshall Street, Suite 619, downtown Suite 1. And I'm also specialized in trauma therapy. Valencia Jones Edwards of Samaritan Counseling Center. I do uh, anger management and batteries intervention. So if you have anger issues or if you have problems with abuse or have abused somebody, Call and make an appointment, 318-221-6121. Um, um, yeah, yeah. Um, life coach, wellness coach, shaman. Um, I can be reached at ascensionab.com. You can book you an appointment there. My ultimate goal is from A to B. Whatever it is that you're going through, if spiritually you're led to me, we're going to make it work. Also, it can be reached at Facebook, IG, whatever it is. If you see me, it's all love. We're going to make it work, and we're going to get you there. I'll go ahead and give one more resource or a couple more resources uh, for anyone who is actually trying to seek shelter or assistance from a situation. Uh, you can refer to the YWCA of Northwest Louisiana. You can also reach out to the Providence House located in Shreveport. You can just Google Providence House and it'll be the first thing that pops up. Um, and also if you have children that have witnessed uh, any type of major crime, uh, violent crime or sexual assault or anything of that nature. Uh, you have several resources through Project Celebration, through Samaritan Counseling, also through the Gingerbread House located in Shreveport as well. Um, with that being said, my positive words are prayer, patience, and perseverance. I'm Jadidra. I'm a survivor and advocate for domestic violence and sexual I'm Mary Dumars, and I'm a survivor of uh, childhood abuse. All right, so we're going to just get started with the um, Love Us First Town. Um, before we start, I just want to thank everybody for coming out today, for y'all taking out y'all's time to come and sit in. We just have this discussion over these issues that we feel are important to us as a community of people. Any specific questions? I'm just going to be jumping out of the way. So, Josh, just kind of roll with us. So, the first question that I'm going to ask What is domestic violence? Since we're talking about domestic violence, domestic violence is when there is a dispute, conflict, sometimes violence within a family. Uh, may not necessarily be physical violence, it can be emotional, it can be social, it can be religious. It can financial as well. And it doesn't always have to be between the um, male and female. It can also be elderly, violent, as well as teen and children. All that could be included in the issue of domestic. The next question, hmm, do you think lack of parenting contributes to the way we see ourselves? I would say Yes, you know, because we're in the South, this is the Bible Belt, and they often say raise up a child in the way that they should go, so whenever they get older, they're going to have to depart from it. You know, but if we don't have that influence, okay, you're a little bit lacking in particular areas, you know what I'm saying? So, I, my opinion is most definitely so. I do think that parenting that has an issue a lot to do with uh, how we see ourselves, mm -hmm. but I also think the community. So if my parents are talking negative to me and they are seen as maybe not the best parent, but if my teacher, if somebody else in the community see me, like my teacher say, oh, you're smart, 
you're good. You're going to be somebody. I think that can help. So I do think the parents add to it, but I think as a community, right. that is the key. That is the thing that can enhance whoever we are. It takes a village to raise right. a child, right? Right. So, you know, a lot of times people come out about being sexual abused or went through domestic violence, but it's years down the line or it's months down the line. And people are quick to ask, why don't they just leave? Kids got into some insight next to There's many reasons why person who leave an abusive relationship. I think um, as society poses the question, why doesn't she just leave? Uh, I think a better question would be, why does this individual just stop? Because it's probably as easy for a person being abused to leave as it is for that individual to stop. Um, it's a learned behavior and it has to be unlearned. There's so many reasons why someone in an abusive relationship would say one of those reasons is hope. Uh, you remember that this was an abusive person when they met. Uh, this person bought flowers and you're beautiful and you're amazing. And I know we've all heard that when you meet someone, you meet their representative. Uh, so it takes fool a little bit while to come out. But once it comes out, <laughs> but once it comes out, you got to believe it. Um, you've often heard people say, when people show you who they are, believe. believe. And, but sometimes I think uh, in abusive relationships, they're holding on to the fact that, well, this this can't be you. This, But that is exactly who it is. Um, and then, of course, we blame victims, just like you said, well, why don't you just stay? Why don't you just leave? Or, you know, um, or a lot of times because, you know, these people are uh, chameleons. And so the community isn't going to naturally just know that this is an abusive person. Uh, most abusers are naturally manipulative. And so you're not going to guarantee to be believed if you do believe. So there's so many, so many things that contribute to the person's thing. Yeah, what is it? Uh, a lot of the times it can be financial reasons. You know what I'm saying? And also, what am I going to do? What is my life going to be like? This is the person that I love. Mm -hmm. Or, and I, and I speak this way because I grew up from a Christian background, you know, so even in marriage, until death do us part, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So, all right, now I'm going against everything that I was taught. Not mm -hmm. only that, I got to face my fears and change because now I'm settled. You know what I'm saying? I have stability. So, and just starting all of that over and I'm leaving my the person that I care about. Where am I going to go? And it's kind of to me it would seem as overwhelming. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because I've also been in situations that wasn't the best, mm -hmm. and I tried to push through, and I tried to. Well, maybe we can make it work. You know what I'm saying? Until I know, at least in my life, at least a lesson in learning myself. You know what I'm saying? And what it is that I will accept and what I won't accept. You know, so regardless of what was happening with this person, it just came down to me. Is this love? Do I deserve better? Because until I make that decision, this is kind of sort of what I'm going to attract. You know what I'm saying? Or and like people say your vibe attract your tribe. Okay, well, if I'm if this is what I think love is, I'm going to settle for it. Mm -hmm. But if I want more for myself, you know what I'm saying? But that's a whole journey in itself, you know, so multiple factors in my opinion as well. We, we accept substandard relationships in the hope that it will pan out well in the end. And that man or woman who has given me hell now will later be a good provider. Mm -hmm. And we'll be able to say, well, that's a good woman, that's a good man, they stood by me, we've been together X amount of years. But then when it comes to the children, if you stay together for your children, what are you teaching your children? If your child watches you get beat every day, or are, are verbally abused every day, or they watch you abuse someone, that child is learning that these behaviors are acceptable. Because the first teachers of a societal habit 
or in the home. That child is thinking, first of all, the child is traumatized. Anyone would be. I mean, I've been in a home where someone was being beat, and hearing it was disturbing and traumatizing to me. But the child who has not even learned all the societal habits and ways of coping, that child is traumatized, and they're traumatized on a regular basis, and they're learning that this is how you're supposed to be a man or a woman. If you're a woman and you're being abused, then this is okay, this is just how it is. If you're a man who's abusing, well that's a show of manhood. Bring the check home, put food on the table, drink if you want to, beat if you want to, you're being a man. Mm -hmm. And then you have same-sex abuse. You know, once again, you're teaching the future generation that this substandard relationship is okay. For those that it affects when you look at the victim, it makes them kind of trepidatious about going ahead and getting into a serious relationship in the future. Mm -hmm. If I've been in this horrible relationship or multiple horrible relationships to where I was the victim, it's going to make me go ahead and say, well, you know what? Something is a common additive here. Let me just say to hell with common relationships. Mm -hmm. And then people criticize people for not getting married or not investing in a long-term relationship. But if we're still being affected emotionally, mentally, spiritually, physically by everything that's happening here, that's why you don't have a lot of people seeking a long-term or even a serious relationship. Mm -hmm. Some people label them as loose or not really caring or loving. No, sometimes people care too much to where they don't want to give themselves up emotionally. They don't want to open up their heart all the way to possibly be hurt again in that same fashion. Yeah. I know a lot of times the men that I counsel, I counsel men who abuse women. And the story is always the same. Of course, it may be different, but just the ones I've seen over the past, the past few years. They come in, they talk about she should obey and a lot of B words and call me on my name and everything. They're super angry. Mm -hmm. But then when you hear that story, it's always the same for me. I had a 32 year old man sitting there. He's old and he just got crazy for beating up his wife and stuff. And I said, so tell me about your dad. And he was just, I remember one time my dad beat my mom so bad that he had gave her a head wound and blow just gushing out. And I just knew my mom was dead. So he said, I'm six years old and run upstairs. I put the blanket on. Now, as he's telling his story at 32, he starts rocking. He was like, now I was sitting in the closet, and I was rocking. I was like, my mama did, my mama did, my mama did. And he said, I just kept rocking. I'm watching him rock, so I just broke out of tears, because I'm looking at 32, is now six now. Mm -hmm. and, and he was like, I still have nightmares about this. The stuff my dad would do to my mom was just torture. And so he got through, I'm crying, and he's crying. So when he got through, I said, so then, why are you the monster in your, in your kids' nightmares now? And he finally thought to himself, wait a minute, I'm doing the exact same thing. Because he didn't realize that subconsciously you're repeating that same thing. It's These fine. men keep telling, it's the same story over and over. They come in, they're angry, they hate me because I'm a woman. But then when you start talking to them, it's the same thing over and over. So these men grow up to abuse. Okay, that's going we're going to roll into the next question. I'm just gonna say, how do you deal with someone else's trauma? So you know someone who's been traumatized and you have to take on just being a friend or being in a relationship or that's someone that you're married to and they're dealing with trauma. How would you how would you cope with having to be that person dealing with trauma? I think it's just kind of going with the flow with that person. I know with, with me and, and my situation. I know I wanted, uh, I didn't want to talk about it all the time, you know. When, when I came in with my friends or, or, or family members, like I wanted them to be like, let's go do something, like let's just go get something to eat or let's go do this. I don't want to talk about it. You know, and, and I shared it when I shared it, but it was like, you know, I don't want to talk about this. Uh, 
But then I also have people, you know, a lot of my friends or family, you know, push me. You know, they're like, you ain't got time to be crying. Like, you know, you finna grieve, you got a week, get over it, let's move forward. And, and you know, and I had like one friend, well, you know, I had to stop talking to them. And I was like, I'm not that same girl. I'm, I'm not that same girl anymore. Like, I haven't had this major life event. I know I'm doing a lot, but God dang, give me a break. Like, I'm not, I'm not able to, you know, be this, this, this idea of who you thought I was before. And, and so a lot of times I think it's just like, you know, just giving them that little space, but give them other things to do. And like, let them talk about it when they want to talk about it, but not forcing a conversation, not asking them all the time, how you doing? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's like, mm -hmm. I'm here, I'm living, you know. Yeah. What I wanted to say was, as a female growing up in those kind of environments, for parents, you really have to make sure that your daughter feels safe. Because as a female, growing up in that environment, I ended up dating nothing but thugs. Because who else was going to protect me but thugs? Mm -hmm. I had to have a monster mm -hmm. to protect me from other monsters. Mm -hmm. So if l Dog got the biggest gun, I need to be close to l Dog because I won't get shot by everybody else. Or I won't get beat up or robbed or everything else. It was really violent. And so as a female, you learn to align yourself with power. Whoever has power, you're going to be less likely to be sexually harassed, raped, robbed, beat up, or shot or stabbed by other girls. And so I had to align myself with that. And it wasn't until I became an adult that I realized why thugs were so appealing. Because it was conducive to the environment. They, they provided protection. Nobody messes with you if you're L dog's girl because they know l Dog is crazy and has seven AKs. Mm -hmm. So that's something you don't have to worry about, but if you had that same protection from coming from your own household, mm -hmm. then you would not need that. Mm -hmm. Who is y'all love your uh, street names, by the way? It's good. It's so good. <laughs> We are winding down the Love Us First panel. Uh, this is Jerry Thomas, and I want to thank all of my guests for today and my co host, Jadija Williams. Uh, and we had a wonderful time. We're going to just say goodbye to you guys, and we will be back with another segment of this. This will not be the last time y'all will hear from the Love Us First panel. So until next time, y'all take care of yourselves and Stay positive, but it's important that we keep a positive attitude and a positive mindset. Y'all take care and be blessed.